To the Point with Michael Williams. It helps to provide water for one in every three Floridians. It has an impact on everything from agriculture to where communities are built in South Florida. And now the Everglades is ground zero yet again for another fight over the environment and its future. Good morning and welcome. The Everglades, the river of grass, is considered a national treasure in our own backyard. But generations of Floridians have been trying to change its face. As the Everglades Foundation points out, the first steps to alter it came in 1845 when the state's first legislature wanted to drain it. The draining's been going on ever since in many forms and fashions. Joining me, the CEO of the Everglades Foundation, Eric Eichenberg. Thank you so much for being our guest on To The Point. Thank you, Michael. Great to be here. At issue today, an $880 million state and federal plan to clean up the Everglades and a question about how we pay for it. There's been a big fight involving environmentalists and Big Sugar over Big Sugar's contribution to that $880 million plan. For our viewers, take us in from the start. What's at issue? What's the concern? Governor Rick Scott announced uh, last June this $880 million plan that you've mentioned, a plan that was agreed upon between the state of Florida and the Environmental Protection Agency in Washington. And essentially some of the blueprint of that, what it will do to clean up is what? Things like filtration marches? Yes. Uh, uh, the stormwater treatment areas that we have in place today, it will expand those type mm -hmm. of uh, uh, water treatment areas. So the, the next 13 years, these projects will be ongoing. All this to filter agricultural runoff, phosphorus, a lot of which has been blamed on big sugar to filter it and really give a new set of lungs and filtration for the Everglades. Polluted water from a number of sources. Mm -hmm. The Water Management District will tell you that 60% of that pollution that is entering the STAs comes from those sugar farms. So with that as our background, now we've got $880 million plan, how to pay for it. That's been the big fight in Tallahassee where environmentalists argue they took a step backwards, at least in many opinions, a few weeks ago. Talk about what happened, why, and what's so significant about it. Well, legislation was introduced in the House that codifies the governor's water quality plan. We support the codification of the plan. However, the legislation went a little bit too far in our opinion. The bottom line here is there's, there's language in this bill that extends a tax on residents within the South Florida Water Management District. The ten, there's a tenth of a mill that's on folks' mm -hmm. property tax bills each and every month. That tax was set to expire, is set to expire in 2016. However, what the legislation does, it extends that tax out with no sunset. So residents within the Water Management District will pay, it generates about $35 million a year. Mm -hmm. There's now talk to use that tax revenue to pay for this plan. On the flip side of that, I go back to the 60% number that I mentioned. And that's, that you believe is the share that agricultural interest big sugar should help pay for correct that's there that's the number of pollution that enters into the STAs that the district says is associated with the e from the EAA mm -hmm. farms the legislation though calls for a per acre tax mm -hmm. which has been set for 20 years at $25 an acre that tax is going to continue now for the next 10 years after that it will ratchet down to $10 an acre thereafter the, the issue here, Michael, is in 1996, voters in this state passed a constitutional amendment to our state constitution, mm -hmm. a polluter pays amendment. 68% of the voters approved it. Over the last 17 years, it has not been fully implemented. We feel strongly that $25 an acre doesn't get you to covering the cost of the pollution that's caused from the farming. This has not become law yet. It's still got to go to a full vote Correct. with the House, the Senate. The Florida Senate has to deal with this. But your concern is you've locked in a price for agricultural interests there that may not be representative of the reality of their contribution to the pollution problem and therefore what they need to pay to fix it. And That's you may need more money. This may not allow you to have the latitude to go get it. Correct. Exactly right. And the way that this, this plan was structured as far as the financing, there's a appropriation that will come each year out of Tallahassee in, in the range of $32 million a year for the next 13 years. The Water Management District, and also to pay for this $880 million plan, will spend $220 million of reserves. Mm -hmm. If there's a, a major a hurricane here in South Florida, those reserves have been used in the past to get the system back functioning again, the locks and the uh, pumps and the stations. The, the, using reserves is something that we, we want to get more information for. We, we question the use of reserves. There's also talk about using ad valorem growth and new construction of homes in the out years. Mm -hmm. Our view is simple. If taxpayers are going to be asked to pay for this cleanup, Big Sugar should also be at the table to pay their fair share. 
They argue we are. They say this codifies a rate we've been paying. We do believe we're paying our fair share. When you talk to them, uh, what is your counter argument? And what is the person at home to make of all this? Because really, in one form or fashion, we've been hearing this debate for decades yes. right now about fair share and where that fair share is. The sugar industry is in Tallahassee saying that they have invested some two hundred million dollars and it's working if that was the case then why are we spending an additional eight hundred and eighty million dollars to clean up the water it's simple as that there is there, there is polluted water that has to be treated the governor went to washington in a leadership role and negotiated at the federal government he came back to the state we support that plan there's a water quality standard that will be in place by 2025 we have sought that water quality standard for decades it is that close, but it has to be funded. How pivotal is this funding issue now before the legislature? It's gone through committee, got to go through the Senate. How pivotal will this be ultimately to the future for the river of grass and the cleanup in your mind? The, in discussions with the Florida legislature, there, there is no appetite to raise taxes. Mm -hmm. So this $25 tax rate that's proposed in this legislation, there's a movement on changing that rate. So we, ha we are trying to work through with this legislation ways that not only deal with this 880 plan that the governor uh, put forth, but there are a number of restoration projects that have to continue in order for the Everglades to continue to be restored. Restoration is working. We cannot let up. Talk about a larger 100,000 foot view for viewers. As I said at the outset of our broadcast, we have this national treasure in our backyard. Many people never go to see it. Don't understand not only its environmental importance, but also its importance to the ability of us to live an urban or suburban lifestyle with water supply or backup water supply. Talk about what's in the balance in terms of that environmental treasure for a moment. Exactly right, and this is a national treasure. It's also an economic engine. We commissioned an economic report a couple years ago that shows that for every dollar you invest, every dollar you invest, it's a four dollar return. And, and that economic benefit that provides jobs to South Florida, but it's also an indirect impact on real estate. Folks come to Florida and they move to Florida because of our waterways, mm -hmm. our beaches. We need clean water. This is a growth state. Real estate drives it. Hunting, fishing, boating, all of these industries rely on clean water and a healthy Everglades. It is an economic engine. Not to mention the food chain out there, the wildlife, which we've seen drastically reduced over the decades. All of those things pivotal to the importance of that resource for so many reasons, as you just described. What grade do you give the governor right now for his environmental stewardship? Well, I'm not going to grade the governor. I will, I will simply say that the governor took a key leadership role last June in announcing this water quality plan. Right. The, the effort of trying to get a water quality standard has been sought for decades. And Governor Scott went to Washington and made it happen. Again, our simple question and what we're focused on is how are we going to pay for it? Fairness. The fairness issue that you've said from the outset. Let me read you a quote from the Palm Beach Post. Brian Hughes, who represents sugar quarters, uh, who represents sugar growers, excuse me, said environmentalists are reading too much in the bill, which he argues is chiefly aimed at updating state law after two decades, he says, of lawsuits and negotiations between the industry, state, and environmentalists. The quote, the provisions in this House bill actually, Hughes argues, will cost sugar farmers more money. We're paying more in this bill than the current statute would require. Your response? Well, I respectfully disagree on a couple of fronts. First of all, what this legislation does is it weakens water quality standards. It weakens water quality standards. And, and how? There is a lawsuit that's pending before a court where permits that were issued by the Water Management District are called into question. There is an amendment in this bill, if passed, will nullify that process. The Florida legislature in the past has let the judicial process run its course. If the legislature doesn't agree with a judge's decision, then fix it. However, this bill trumps what is happening in a courtroom by benefiting sugar. That's a major objection to the current bill that's moving through the House. Do you think at the end of the day this bill gets enough traction to become law? I'm cautiously optimistic that at the end of the day what we see in the House will be a better product. There's, there's, no, there's an effort here to try to work these issues out. We're certainly committed to Everglades restoration, but it takes a number of stakeholders. We have to get it right. We cannot run a bill and jam it through uh, at this point in the session. But Eric, what you're saying is it's a fairness issue on who pays, how much polluters pay. We have to get the balance right for this long-term plan. You don't feel we're there yet. If for some reason you're wrong in your prognostication, where there do you go? Well, there's, there's a number of options that will be considered at that point, but I will tell your viewers 
that there's, a, there's members of this delegation in Tallahassee. Uh, a representative right here from West Palm Beach, Mark Pafford, was the lone dissenting vote in the Appropriations Committee yesterday. It was a courageous stand that Mark took. It now shifts to the Senate. I will say, though, the House will take this up next week. So I urge people to encourage their legislators to not weaken water quality standards and to protect the Everglades, protect the taxpayer. When it moves to the Senate, Represent, uh, Senator Bruzzo, Senator Clemens, Senator Sachs, a number of the senators from this, Senator Negron, mm -hmm. north of here, they all need to hear from their constituents. This is our water supply. This is an economic engine. But more importantly, the Everglades is a national treasure that must be protected. Eric Eichenberg, CEO of the Everglades Foundation, on that eloquent closing thought. We will thank you for taking time to be with us, sharing with our viewers a pivotal fight that we'll keep an eye on in Tallahassee. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Michael. Following up on the Everglades, coming up, the lieutenant governor leaves office. We turn to politics of that sort. What does it mean for the governor's re-election bid? Up next on our roundtable.